Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to the fourth video in this series where we are building a task manager application from scratch using the mean stack. In the last video, we created the REST API for this application. So we now have to connect the Angular front end to that REST API. And that is what we are doing in this video. All right then, so let's go to our folder and let's go to the front end folder again and open it up in Visual Studio Code. Okay, and let's um, type in ng-serve to serve this application. Okay, so once that's up and running, we can go to localhost 4200. Okay, so now uh, let's hook this up to our API. So we want to be able to show all of the lists in our database here and all of the tasks corresponding to a selected list in this view here. But let's start off with the new list button and creating a new list. Let's start off with that. Okay, so let's go to our Angular app and let's create a new terminal and let's type in ng generate service and we can call this uh, task service. So just type in task and press enter. This service will be responsible for modifying our data. So let's go to uh, task.service.ts and let's create a few methods. So first one would be create list and that will require the list title. So the title will have to be passed in here of type string. So here we want to send a web request to create a list. Okay, but we don't want to put the HTTP logic in this service. We want to outsource that to another service. So let's go to the terminal and type in ng generate service web request. So we are creating a new service called web request service, which will handle all of the web request logic. So let's open that up and let's import the HTTP client. Within the constructor, we can type in private HTTP client or um, HTTP of type HTTP client and actually that's the wrong import so let's delete that and let's get the right import okay there we go and now we can start creating some methods uh, such as uh, get okay so we've got this get method here and um, actually first thing I want to do is create a property in this class which will be a read only property so read only uh, root underscore euro and in the constructor I'm going to set this so this dot root URL is equal to um, HTTP low post 3000 and the get method will take in a URI of type string and it will do this.http.get and here we'll use a template string using the back tick and we'll do um, this dot root URL slash the URI passed in to the method and there we go that's what we want to do and we want to return this we want to return the observable that this returns we want to do the same thing with post passes in a URI of string and we want to return this dot HTTP dot post and we want to get this same string here and there's also the body here so here we will put in a payload and um, and a payload will be passed into the post method of type object there we go and for patch uh, the same thing will happen for patch so we can copy and paste this post this to patch and change the name to patch. There we go, that's exactly the same. And finally, we can do the delete, which will just have a URI of type string. And we can return this.http.delete with the URL, which we can copy and paste from here. There we go. So that's our web request service done. It's simply to wrap all of our request methods uh, to make it a bit neater and provide the root URL as a constant here and then use it in the requests. 
and then just return the observables that these HTTP methods return. Okay, so now we can go back to the task service. We actually have to inject it into this service. So we will do private service of type web request service and import that. And here we can do this dot web request service dot post and pass in the URI, which will be slash list to create the list. And uh, now we have the payload and the payload will just be an object with title. Okay, there we go. So save that. Okay, and now we can actually test this out and see if this works. So let's go to task view uh, component.html and let's find the new list button, which is here. And we can actually um, put an event handler for the click event and set that equal to create new list. And let's go to the component class and let's create that method, create new list. And we're going to need the title here. So the title is going to be needed. But currently we don't have a method of getting the user to input a title. So for now we will just be testing this and we'll be using a test title and we won't be requiring the user to enter anything. So remove that. Let's first inject the service. So private task service of type task service. Okay, so now we can go to the create new list method and we can use this task service to create a list. So we can do this dot task service dot create list, pass in the title and we can call this testing. And now we can do dot subscribe. Okay, we're getting an error here and it's saying property subscribe does not exist on type void. And this is because we haven't returned this value here. So this request has to be returned because it's returning an observable, which we can then subscribe to here. So now we're not getting the error. Okay, great. So, and uh, we will be getting the uh, response. So we will just get the response of any, and let's just um, show an alert. Actually, let's just um, console log this response first. So let's console log the response. And let's see what happens. So let's save this and let's save the task service. And we can now go to our app and we're getting an error. Okay, so we're getting this error because we haven't imported the HTTP client into our app.module. Okay, so let's go back to our code and let's find app.module.ts, uh, which is here. And let's import uh, the HTTP client module. So import HTTP client module from at angular slash common slash HTTP. There we go. And we can uh, put this in the imports array. So HTTP client module. Okay, that should be okay. If we save this and go back to our app, we now see our UI and we don't have any errors, which is great. So now let's try and click this button here. Okay, we're getting some errors. Okay, we're getting a cause error. That's interesting. Also, we're getting a 404 um, because we have formatted this URL wrong. So let's go back to our task view component TS. Okay, so let's go to our task service. Okay, so here we are um, passing in slash list, but we should just pass in list because otherwise uh, two slashes will be um, used to send the request. So let's just save that. And let's go back to our app. We're probably still going to get an error because there was a cause error, but let's see what happens now. Okay, so we're getting this cause error um, blocked by cause policy. And now to fix this, what we can do is we can just um, is we can just go to the API code um, here in app.js, and we can uh, create some middleware that is able to append some cause headers to our responses. So uh, let's do that here. And actually there's a good site for this. It's called enable-cause.org uh, slash server.html. Uh, and we can click on Express.js. And we can copy and paste this code here, which will basically just set some cause headers on our responses. So let's copy this and let's go back to our app. 
and let's paste it in here. And let's just make a comment here. Okay, so now we've done that. Now let's see if we still get the error when we go back to our app. Uh, let's refresh this and click on new list. Okay, we're still getting this. Okay, so here is the issue. So we are requesting slash list when the root is actually slash lists. So let's go back to our Angular code and we can just put the S in here. So now we have lists, save that and this should now work. So if we press the new list button, there we go. We now get this document back with uh, the title of testing, which is great. And we can go to Postman and just confirm that this is working by uh, doing get localhost 3000 slash lists. And hopefully there should be uh, two documents in this array. So let's send. And there we go. So now we have two documents in our database. Okay, so let's try this again. Let's try and create a new list again. And we're getting back another document. Great. Let's go and do the get request. And we now have three documents in our database. So the new list button is working. We just have to make it so that the user can input a title and it creates a list with that title. Okay, so now let's work on that next.